Uh, good morning. Um, those of you who may not be familiar with the Defense Spectrum Organization, we're concerned with anything with the DOD that goes into the wireless medium. So once it leads hardwire and goes wireless, that's our concern. So next slide, please. I'll describe a bit about what the Defense Spectrum Organization does um, and try to give you a little bit of a flavor of some of the capabilities that we, we provide to the DOD that we will look for uh, contracting industry support for. We support the direct, the, the combat and commands. Um, all of DISA does that, but our role in that aspect is a little bit unique in that we actually go into the spectrum management offices within each combatant command. And in some cases, we augment their staff to develop um, exercising frequency plans. Uh, well, it could be exercise, it could be operational, uh, but we help support the, the overall staff. The way things operate within the DOD is you have all of this great sophisticated equipment that operates wirelessly, uh, but you can't turn it on unless you have a specific frequency or frequencies assigned to it. And that's our role that we, we um, support the, the overall DOD is to get those frequencies, make sure that they don't cause interference, and they operate and be able to uh, provide the mission that is uh, essential for the DOD. Uh, we also provide um, training for capabilities. We, we and I'll get a little, into it a little bit more, we develop the enterprise solutions for spectrum management for DOD. Um, and, and obviously, we can't just throw that across the fence. We have to provide training, too. So we, we are um, deploying folks to go out and not only uh, how do they operate this sophisticated uh, tool, uh, but how do they operate a, uh, a spectrum analyzer and take that data and, and make some uh, informative decisions uh, as a result of this, the, what they're seeing on their uh, spectrum analyzer. Uh, so we, we have a, a cadre of um, enlisted personnel, officers, um, as well as, uh, for the most part, um, retired enlisted personnel that uh, we actually do deploy throughout the world to help support all of these activities. Next topic is uh, spectrum, uh, sorry, let's go back one, one slide. Uh, the next topic, spectrum advocacy. Uh, we are the advocate for DOD. We work closely with the DOD CIO Spectrum Plans and Policy Office um, and looking in two different realms. I, Obviously, because of the DOD mission, we go offshore, uh, so we have to look at uh, the international aspect. For national, uh, many of you may have seen different advertisements about uh, or articles that talk about the federal government releasing spectrum for commercial wireless uh, capabilities. Uh, that's our chief role for the DOD, is to make sure that we protect the mission of the Department of Defense as we potentially look at uh, relinquishing spectrum. Um, so DSO's role is to perform uh, engineering analyses, uh, work with the services and the joint staff to develop uh, potential operational impacts of this uh, potential release of spectrum, and to make sure that DOD can do their mission for the future just looking at specifically the spectrum that is being eyed at that current time. We also are responsible for looking forward to what are the DOD needs and how, what are our spectrum goals as we move forward. Obviously, we have increased in our, our throughput requirements, our bandwidth requirements. That all boils down to the, the use of spectrum either more efficiently or the mo more use of spectrum. So, we are the advocate of DOD to, to work with the national authorities as well as um, the uh, Federal Communication Commission on the uh, commercial side to, to meet the goals of the DOD. Our international support is really uh, in two forms. All of the satellites that the Department of Defense either puts in orbit or the other, the foreign nation satellites that uh, come near any of our DOD satellites. We do the 
the, national, or the international coordination for those orbital slots, uh, specifically for the geostationary orbits. Uh, so there are, there are a lot of engineering guidelines that uh, must be followed internationally, and, and we do the analysis, uh, head up the DOD um, uh, team that uh, discusses all these coordinations with uh, the international uh, spacefaring nations. We also uh, head up the DOD work for the World Radio Communication Conference, which is a, a three to four year cycle uh, of how the world will divide up and uh, reuse some of the spectrum uh, internationally. Um, as you can imagine, because uh, we are um, you know, concerned with the DOD and going offshores, uh, our operations in the spectrum that we choose to use our systems has to be uh, interference free with uh, host nations. And so there are a lot of international discussions that happen that, that, dis that talk about during this World Radio Communication Conference cycle of changing the way the world operates spectrum. We have to look at how does that impact DOD? Is it good? Is it bad? How, what is the uh, strategy to protect our uses for the future? And, and these are very long range. We're, we're talking into 2019, 2025, uh, having to look forward. At the same time, we're also performing the role of uh, what does the DOD need? What do we need to fight for within the international forum? I mentioned that we do enterprise solutions for DOD. We, we uh, created and operate and maintain the uh, Spectrum 21 system that is the frequency uh, assignment tool for all of DOD as well as uh, for the federal government. This tool, as I, I mentioned, you cannot operate any uh, DOD system without gaining a frequency assignment and this tool provides that capability of the engineering algorithms to perform this uh, uh, analysis necessary to to uh, identify frequencies of use. We are in the process now of also developing the next generation of Spectrum 21 called Spectrum 21 Online. Improved algorithms, web-based, um, also interacts with a database uh, called the Joint Spectrum Data Repository that we are also developing, uh, along with other enterprise tools that we utilize for DOD use um, and eventually, more than likely, uh, national use um, as far as man managing the spectrum. It's not solely just for frequency assignment purposes, but other engineering capabilities. And probably the fourth large area that the DSO does is our we're engineering center of excellence for spectrum management. We have a, a large uh, group, both uh, government, military, contractor staff as far as uh, spectrum management uh, experts um, and, and performing all sorts of different uh, either electromagnetic compatibility analyses, uh, testing capabilities on whether there's any kind of radiation hazards uh, that may be um, uh, impinged upon fuels, personnel, um, other things like that. We, we um, have the capability of uh, performing analysis as well as having a, a, a large bullpen basically of uh, SMEs in this area. Next slide, please. Okay, the left-hand side of this slide is in really in basic terms how the DOD and really the, the national government um, and for the most part internationally how we operate uh, utilizing spectrum at this point in time. Um, although we're evolving, we really are what's called a reservation-based um, um, profession where you are provided a frequency assignment for operations of your particular uh, capability and that is yours until at some time you either abuse it or um, uh, you are no longer using it. Um, in order to be able to, uh, to accept or allow future use of, I mentioned, commercial wireless use, as well as DOD's um, requirements in the future, we have to learn how to evolve and how to utilize the spectrum much more robustly than we currently do. 
we can no longer stay with just a reservation-based system. So, so DOD is evolving. The D Defense Spectrum Organization is at the forefront of, first, we developed the uh, DOD Spectrum Strategy for um, Ms. Dekai and, and Mr. Halverson's office. Uh, and we're in the process of um, developing the implementation plan for that strategy, with, which looks at how can we become more efficient in utilization of spectrum? How can we help the acquisition community morph to uh, allow for greater flexibility? How can we improve our tools? How can we integrate them within the network to be able to allow near real-time frequency management over the network? Um, how can we adapt spectrum capabilities and, and bring them into um, the whole acquisition cycle or perhaps modeling and simulation within the DOD? So that's, that's kind of our, our basic um, challenge in front of us as we move toward the future is how do we make sure that DOD can perform their mission? At the same time, how do we allow the U.S.'s economy to grow by allowing more commercial access to spectrum that is, that is currently set aside just for federal use. Um, how do we perform all of these things as we move forward, knowing that we started out with a reservation-based system that uh, there basically was very little spectrum sharing, but now we have to change the paradigm and find ways to uh, do, uh, if not 100% spectrum sharing, very close to 100% to allow U.S. economy to grow, DOD to perform their mission. So um, that's, that's in a very quick nutshell, basically some of the, the capabilities and the responsibilities of the Defense Spectrum Organization. One thing that you'll see in the information that's being provided is in the next year, we will have seven different contracting opportunities to help us move forward with this. The first RFP, I believe, is going to be released sometime actually this quarter uh, with the, the final of the seven sometime in the third quarter of 15. So we'll be having a very active year's time as we go forward as far as uh, contracting goes. So next slide, please. Okay gives our contact information uh, within the DSO. One thing I did fail to mention is DSO, my office is actually headquartered here in the DISA facility. We also have a large portion of our staff and our contracting down in Annapolis, Maryland, uh, directly across the, uh, the Severn River from the Naval Academy on the uh, old uh, uh, David Taylor Research Center, if those of you may be familiar with that. But, there are two specific locations that we operate out of. So with that, I'll take any questions anyone has. Jerry. <laughs> okay, Stu, thank you. Uh, you mentioned you have seven opportunities come up. Do you have any kind of way to delineate those to the audience? Because some of us are interested in some of your spectrum opportunities. Okay. So I don't see those visible here today. Okay, I, I guess I was assuming they would be in a, a packet that you might have, but let me, yeah, I'll, de I'll delineate those. They range from our GEMSYS program, which is the Joint Electromagnetic Spectrum Information System. This is a program of record that uh, is actually the only DOD uh, spectrum-oriented program of record. Um, they are responsible for, for pulling together uh, the tools that I talked to you about. Uh, so Spectrum 21 Online, our Joint Spectrum Data Repository. Uh, there's other uh, host nation agreement capabilities within that. So GEMSYS program um, is the overall overarching future for DOD spectrum management. They have a program office uh, support activity that's coming out. Um, and that's actually the first one that you'll see that is uh, that will be released this, this quarter. Um, we, we range the, the gambit too. Uh, the other thing is that I, I really didn't get into is that DSO manages for the Department of Defense um, the DOD radio frequency database. So 
all the characteristics of all the systems that DOD operates, we are responsible to maintain and provide uh, information for the database. So that's, and that's a small part of that database. We also pull in anything else that may be of importance to us, what other systems operate in our general uh, AOR. So we have FCC data, we have any international data that's, that may be available, satellite data, um, just anything really that you would feel that is uh, necessary for radio frequency, we capture and maintain that database. So that support contract is also going to be uh, one of the contracts that come out, our database maintenance. I mentioned that we have a facility in Annapolis uh, because we have an, a building that's uh, external to DISA headquarters, we have to maintain that building. So a facilities contract is, is one of the other ones that we will be uh, operating. GEMSYS, besides all the different capabilities I mentioned, they have a, a, a developmental program also to integrate everything they call the integrated spectrum desktop. Um, that is a software development program and that is another uh, contract that we will be letting um, during the fourth quarter of fifth, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, fourth quarter of 15 is when that will uh, uh, be put out. Those of you who may be um, a little more familiar with the, the Joint Spectrum Center as well as the Defense Spectrum Organization knows that, know that we have a, an overall contract that uh, we operate under. Um, and that contract is actually going to be, uh, become three separate contracts. Um, one capability in that, uh, the, the three separate ones, is called applied engineering. Um, and that is to, to really go after the support that we provide with those spectrum management experts that I, I mentioned in one of the other slides. We provide support for acquisition programs within DOD. So if you're an air pl platform developer and you want to integrate all your different systems aboard the aircraft. We have the capability to tell you whether placing an antenna in a particular orientation on your airframe uh, may or may not cause interference. Um, we, we do the same thing for shipboard s situations, uh, sighting of antennas at uh, local ground sites installations, um, as well as we support um, the commercial industries in some of the uh, areas, one, one area is that uh, when cell phone providers or carriers want to place a, um, a cell tower or, or any type of antenna, it could be small cell antenna, aboard a military or on a military installations, they're required to get an electromagnetic compatibility analysis as well as a radiation hazard analysis. That's per, per um, law. Um, for the Army and Air Force facilities, they come to the Defense Spectrum Organization to perform that analysis. So all those types of work are in that first group, the Applied Engineering RFP that we're gonna put out. Next one is called Operations in E3, or Electromagnetic Environmental Effects and Strategic Spectrum Planning. That is, that is uh, one RFP also. That uh, is our op operational support that I talked about, our deploying of folks, and, and um, so that's the, that covers that area. Um, strategic planning office, I talked about the national and international support and the spectrum strategy. That is in our strategic planning office and that is all part of that uh, RFP also. And the third one, third final of the seven, is uh, enterprise services and tools. This is all the software development efforts that we're performing. Uh, a, a good share of the work that we do now um, is in an enterprise solutions. So all of our database, the Joint Spectrum Data Repository, um, as well as Spectrum 21 Online, GEMSYS, all those developmental efforts, all the, the software development are all in one group and all in one uh, contract that will be uh, um, put out for bids l later next year. So, any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm David Weston with CompSearch. Um, given the uh, the current environment uh, of spectrum environment and uh, 
the growth of the wireless industry, the increasing in uh, spectrum demand and spectrum dependence, as well as the impacts of the national uh, broadband plan upon uh, uh, DOD operations. Uh, can you comment uh, about uh, the future and, and uh, about your uh, innovation acquisition strategy? Sure. Yeah, that, that is, um, all of those issues are why um, we felt it very necessary uh, working with uh, DOD CIO to put out the uh, DOD spectrum strategy um, because we, we no longer as, as a DOD can operate the way we have in the past. So um, what we're doing is um, looking at how we can change first really science and technology within the DOD how we can enable them to uh, understand the importance of being more flexible for um, uh, acquisition development. So uh, as we're implementing the spectrum strategy, uh, we are actually, DSO is actually leading uh, two of the groups, two of the three of the groups that are um, uh, putting together um, the roadmap and the uh, acquisition strategy for for DOD in general, um, that's not to say that that's, that's our acquisition strategy in the form that we've been talking today. It's, it's for at &L within DOD to help them understand how they should go forward with their strategy to allow DOD in the future to uh, perform their mission. So. Mr. Timmerman, can we take one from the virtual audience? Yes. Sorry, sir. Can you explain DISA's position on ITU Appendix 30B concerning extended KU band satellite bandwidth? While many end users in the satellite community find this compelling, satellite operators perceive this as risky business. Can you elaborate? Well, that's a very specific question. <laughs> um, ITU, uh, th those of you who've worked internationally, uh, can appreciate the fact that you have to be very, very careful in the way you negotiate with ITU nations. What may be very good for the DOD in the United States may really upset basically the overall apple cart within the, the world stage. Uh, so basically you can't come in as the 500 pound gorilla and say we aren't going to do this in the satellite world because it's good for the United States. We're knowing full well that we, we would like to have some of our foreign partners be able to increase their capability and their technological um, strengths that may one day help the United States and DOD. So specific to that question, we, we really try to guard against anything that will, will impact the DOD's operations. Um, so that as we're, we're looking at Annex 30 and, and um, making sure that we, we don't come across, again, as the big, huge, developed nation that's trying to basically squash international um, innovation, because we, we want to have that happen. Um, so we have to make sure that we're negotiating properly to see what can be gained by the DOD to support some of the initiatives um, in, in the long run, uh, but not impact how we operate uh, now and in the, the, the future. So it's, it's not always cut and dry, basically, within international realm. You have to really look at all the political aspects and how we can go, as I said, the, the um, the ITU, or the World Radio Communication Conference, looks way down the road in 10, 20 years. And so we have to look at what's best for the, the DOD uh, and the United States uh, for the next few years and not just look what's good for us just today or tomorrow. Dick Winter with NCI. Sir, on your enterprise services and tools acquisition, you indicate it's full and open. This means that you're not going to be going to Encore 2 or, or any other GWAC, that it's going to be across the board. Anyone can bid? That's correct. Yes, it'll be full and open. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so
Sir, we have several more from the virtual audience. Okay. Last November, there was an RFI for EMS enterprise services and capabilities. A review of the DSO acquisition opportunities doesn't show this program specifically, but pieces of it in several upcoming acquisitions. Can you provide clarification? Uh, one, one of the three, three large, uh, let me back up, the, the large contract that we have, we're, we're having it in three acquisitions. One of the three is enterprise services and tools. It, it's possible that as we've morphed along in our, our strategy, we've changed slightly the name of the particular capability, but uh, we put out three RFIs one for applied engineering, one for enterprise services and tools, and one for operational E3. So nothing in that aspect has changed. So it, it could be that it's just a naming convention that has changed, but what we put out in the RFI is what we are continuing to pursue. So uh, now certain that the next round of contracts will be in those three categories, enterprise services, operations E3, and strategic planning support, and applied engineering support. Is GEMSIS overarching all three of these? Uh, GEMSIS overarches uh, for all but a very, very small portion of the enterprise services and tools. Um, uh, they do not uh, overarch the other ones, although they, they play a significant role because uh, just about everything that we do within DSO affects other groups within DSO, uh, either directly or indirectly, but um, overseeing the actual effort, um, uh, a good portion of the enterprise services and tool is GEMSYS. Uh, hello, this is David Weston with ComSearch again. Hey, as long as we're on the subject of uh, these three acquisitions, uh, what is the acquisition strategy? Has that been determined yet for them? And will there be a small business set aside portion for one or more? Uh, we, we are still morphing the acquisition strategy somewhat, but right now we're looking at for the enterprise services and tools, there will be a small business, there'll be a, a multi award with a, with a small business set aside. Uh, the operations E3 engineering and strategic uh, planning, uh, same thing, multiple award with a small business set aside. Uh, the third one, applied engineering, is just will be full and open with no set aside. Mr. Timmerman, I'm Mark Jason. I, uh, I had a question about what work that DSO is doing in the CRADA environment. Can you characterize what kind of CRADA projects you're working on and or what kind of CRADA projects you're looking to engage in? Uh, I'm going to have to turn to my uh, SMEs that are here. I, uh, in the past, we have worked some CRADA issues, but I don't believe we have anything ongoing at this point. Now I'm getting a, a no. <laughs> Hang on. Mike, wait for the mic. Thank you. Uh, at the moment, we do not have any specific CRADA projects underway. Uh, we are working very closely uh, with the S&T community and lead some working groups, uh, both uh, engaged with the service labs as well as the National Science Foundation in some of the topics that Mr. Timmerman did cover of how do we pursue technology that will allow us to share spectrum better than we do it today, allow us to be more flexible and agile in our spectrum operations. Uh, so we're working through some of those forums, working with those, uh, those entities uh, to go down that path. But at the moment, we don't have any specific craters underway. I hope that, if that answered that. Mr. Timmerman, number, yes. another from the virtual audience. When precisely can we expect these three new RFPs to drop? Before the end of calendar year 14, next year? Uh, very good question. Um, okay, applied engineering, we're targeting right now second quarter of FY15. And they, these are all release of RFP times. Operations, E3 engineering and spectrum, uh, strategic spectrum planning, RFP release approximately third quarter of FY15. 
and the Enterprise Service and Tools um, release third quarter of FY15. We're looking at, um, I guess the, the next question to go along with that, um, award second quarter of 16 for the, the last two, Operations E3 and Enterprise Services, and an award of uh, first quarter 16 for the Applied Engineering uh, contract. Any other questions? Yeah, there's one more. Okay. <laughs> Does the DSO also utilize tools that analyze the data in the repository, the frequency database, et cetera? How do we expose data integration and analysis tools to the DSO? Oh, that is a, that's a very good question. Yeah, w we do use some analysis tools. We work with other partners also with um, NSA for one uh, in their analysis capabilities. but. Um, DSO actually has the designated uh, data, um, used to be uh, coined as the data czar for DOD, but uh, we have a, a more um, eloquent <laughs> title than that. But um, Dan O'Neill is the, the person within the DSO who, who heads up the Spectrum Community of Interest group. Um, and I can uh, provide you, if you go through the contact information that we, we provided at the end of my slide deck, we can get you contact information for Mr. O'Neill so that you can discuss uh, his activities and how they could be supported. <laughs> 